I slept incredibly well last night. It didn't get nearly as cold as I thought it was going to. White noise of the waterfall. I slept like a baby. I think I woke up once or twice and heard the rain, but this morning, clear skies, sun's come out again, and the wind has died right down. It's probably more out on the road, but it's definitely a lot less than it was yesterday. It's looking like a beautiful day. So I'm all packed up. It's just before nine. I'm gonna try and, uh, yeah, do another semi-decent distance today. We'll climb over to Killin, I think, and then start heading south. I'd quite like to try and find a campsite tonight because I'm starting to get a bit road itchy. I'd quite like a shower. <laughs> um, but we shall see, we shall see where the road takes us. I'm feeling good, legs are feeling okay. Birds singing. Let's get this show on the road. The climb up and over actually wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be at all, especially with fresh morning legs. And the descent down was a lot of fun. Another lovely descent on this route. The rain came in a little bit when I crested over, but it's not too bad. And now I've dropped down into possibly Glen Locke. I'm not sure. Um, but the route has turned around and is heading east now, which means that not only am I going downhill for a while, the wind is behind me. So hopefully we can blast this section pretty quickly down into Killin. was a lovely long cruise down into Killin, which is a very nice little village. Um, lots of good places to eat if you wanted that sort of thing. But I was very strict on myself. I stopped to have a look at the beautiful waterfall. And then I figured legs are feeling good. We're making good time. It's only 11.30, weather's decent. Let's keep on keeping on while we're keeping on. So I'm straight through the village and back into another long climb onto the next section really. Uh, I'm not sure what the next point on the map is, but I'm sure, like the rest of this route, it will be very, very beautiful. So, onwards and upwards.
Well, that last little section of the climb up out of Killen <coughs> was quite tricky. The path follows this beautiful little sheltered valley with an amazing rushing river in the bottom. And it's all slick rocks and roots under your tires, but to either side, you're flanked by these little stunted um, birch trees. And they're all just absolutely draped in all kinds of mosses and lichens. And it's, it's amazing, it's really beautiful. <coughs> I do love moss, I have to say. Anyway, I found gravel again. It's a bit more climbing, but not a lot. Just stop for a snack. Everything smells amazing. It rained and then the sun came out and it's, oh yeah, I love being in the forest. That was day five, another splendid badger day, delivering pretty much what I've come to expect of this really. Little bit of sun, little bit of rain, little bit of wind, amazing riding. Um, quite hard riding today. I pushed more sections than I have previously. Not sort of long sections, but some of the bits are just quite steep and the surface is a bit more beaten up than on a lot of the rest of it. Still spectacular views, all the rest. I came down into Calendar and I thought I'd find a campsite there, but actually by the time I got down there, it felt a bit early to stop. So I figured I'd push on and get a wild camp. Um, but of course it's all Loch Lomond and Trossachs around here. And so it's all camping controlled. So I pedaled and pedaled and pedaled and eventually I found the spot and I bit the bullet and just bought a permit. Um, it's a beautiful view down over Loch Drunky. It's got a picnic table. I didn't really look at the pitch um, before I bought the permit. So it's a little bit damp in places, but it's pretty decent. It was only four pound anyway, so bargain. I'm very hungry, I'm very tired. So this is me signing off on the banks of Loch Drunky. And tomorrow we finish the badger just as I feel like I'm really finding my legs, but that's always the way. Anyway, dinner time for me. I'll see you all on the morrow. Bye now.